Is the Hogwarts Express Collector's Edition unjustifiably big? Let's find out. Inspired in the Hogwarts Express, as seen in the Harry Potter movies, the model is without a doubt seriously impressive. At 118 centimeters, it is shorter than the Titanic, the longest Lego set model ever, and even more so if you take the train tracks out of the equation. Nothing really crazy to talk about the train tracks themselves, aside from the size and piece investment. Weird builds here where the train engine will later on be connected, and a few Technic bricks with holes where the platform can be connected. The distribution of the Technic Bricks makes it so that the platform is never centered to the rails assembly. It makes sense later on to access the passenger's carriage, but still, a part of me would have liked this to be perfectly aligned in the middle. Black Bay is at the bottom with a plaque with sticker with a few pieces of information about the train engine. Nothing too crazy going on with the backside of this lower level of the platform. At 8 bricks tall we have the space where minifigures are standing, light grey border and dark grey for the main area with lots of jumper plates where minifigures can be placed to avoid them falling while moving the model around. The different layers of the columns that support the arches above were very interesting to build. There's these lamps of sorts, two signs for the platform number, unfortunately made with stickers, and the arches themselves, while being a cool building technique, feels a bit flawed with these gaps between the 2 by 2 tiles used. At the top of the central arch we see a quote from the ending scene of Deadly Hallows 2, which shows us in a way how this model is mostly for display purposes, with a few more quotes and scenes that I'll show later on. There's 20 minifigures total in this set, with 18 of them being exclusive here, and in this particular scene there's 7. Harry Potter, Ginny Weasley, and spoiler alert, their 3 kids, James, Albus and Lily. Definitely a curious choice of characters, but one that probably wouldn't made sense to include anywhere else other than this set, as they're only seen in this particular scene of the movies. There's also two unnamed students, one from Ravenclaw and another from Hufflepuff, and all of these figures have alternate faces. The two students have trolleys with trunks, this one has the acceptance letter to Hogwarts, I'm assuming, and a wand case with a wand inside. The trunk has a messy interior, done with a sticker applied to a 1x3 window glass pane in dark brown. The other trunk with trolley has some potion supplies it seems, carries a pet owl on top, and inside a similar thing as the previous trunk shown. Both students pushing their trolleys also have a printed tile with a ticket for the ride. Speaking of tickets, there's an exclusive 8x16 printed tile with a ticket, similar effort that was done in the Hogwarts Icons Collector Edition set done last year with the acceptance letter tiles, something that probably makes Star Wars fans cry as they're still getting stickers for the UCS sets. With my tile I placed two slopes on the back to have it displayed in a nicer manner, as opposed to just laying flat on the ground. The train engine is an impressive model, and probably bigger than what you imagine. Here it is next to the DeLorean, so pretty much about the same length for size reference. I'm not much of a train guy, but it feels like most of the details you would expect from a steam train are there. The cabin at the back, the firebox, built in a tapered manner, was a very interesting studs not on top techniques build, leading to the smoke box, on top of which there's the smokestack and at the front the headlights and train bumpers. These decorations at the front are stickers, but these quarter tiles on the sides are not. But we're back at stickers with the tray numbers back here. From the inside the cabin looks rather simple, and no steam locomotive would be complete without the iconic driving wheels. There's a bit of Technic axles going on here, because there's an actual mechanism that can be triggered with the lever up here, and when you display the model on the train tracks, as these assemblies raise the train just enough so the wheels spin freely. It's a nice thing to have, but I feel it's the kind of thing that you play with once and never again. The mechanism underneath is rather simple, and while looking at these you'll notice all wheels are locked in place. So if you had hopes of maybe motorizing this to have it running on train tracks, you couldn't, as it would derail on curves. But then again, if you were to mod these to motorize, it wouldn't fit regular train track elements, so you would be faced with yet another issue. The train engine comes with a train conductor, a completely made up character that's never seen in the movies, if I'm not mistaken. I'm just thinking that this job must be fairly important to him, as he does it only twice a year, so at least he could shave, right? 
The tender where all the coal is stored is a very straightforward build. A few more stickers on the sides for details and the bright light orange stripe was actually done in a very clever way, so bonus points for building experience here. There's this joint element which is used to connect the tender to the engine like so. The passenger carriage can look plain on the outside but has plenty of detail inside. But before going in, I just want to highlight the access door area with a fair amount of detail and opening doors. Exactly the same on both ends of the train. And underneath by the wheels area, I quite like the use of the warm gears here for some reason. There's also two doors on both sides of the carriage that allow access to the platform at a perfect height. The windows are all built sideways, so even though there was some repetition involved here, here, the way the build was done was very satisfying to put together. One of them is badly scratched though, which could be an issue for some of you. You'll notice at the top the ends of a total of three light brick elements, which no LEGO set had previously had. Even though I once thought that record was held by the Hulkbuster, which I reviewed first, even though the train had come out earlier, so my bad guys. The light bricks light up three compartments inside, somewhat noticeable but harder to see in broad daylight. To access set compartments, the sides of the carriage need to be removed like so. I need to warn you though, when handling this carriage, do it from below or from the sides. Trying to lift it like this has made me drop the model a few times while moving this around. The light bricks light up three different scenes from the movies, with each having its own quote and set of minifigures. Were the light bricks themselves really needed for these? As the mechanism in the front, I feel it's cute to have, but not extremely necessary. In the first scene there's Harry and Ron eating candy while Hermione shows up at the door. There's a box of Bertie Bot's every flavored beans on the floor next to Scabbers, Ron's pet rat and a chocolate. Harry is holding a chocolate frog, Ron a sweet, and Hermione a wand. Hermione and Ron are exclusive to the set, but this version of Harry is not. Without the minifigures inside, the compartment details can be properly seen. On the next compartment, the highlighted scene is from Prisoner of Azkaban, when a Dementor boards the Hogwarts Express and is sent away by Professor Lupin. The Dementor has been featured in three other different sets before, but all other four minifigures are new to these, Professor Lupin, Hermione, Ron and the third Harry Potter minifigure of this set. But wait, there's another in the next compartment, together with Malfoy and Luna Lovegood, all important characters on an iconic scene from the Half-Blood Prince movie. Luna has a brilliant secondary headprint wearing her Spectre Packs. This compartment interior is different in design when compared to the previous ones, which can be seen from another viewpoint by removing this section here that reveals the train corridor. The doors are simply large window pane elements printed that can slide side to side, kept in place with the studs on the floor and rail piece elements at the top, which was very ingenious. Both ends of the carriage can be exposed, removing the top covers like this. One hasn't a lot going on for it, but the other, larger in size, See some trunks stored at a corner featuring the colors of the four Hogwarts houses, a notice board sticker with a few easter eggs and hidden messages to explore, Neville's lost toad and the trolley witch, the last minifigure of this set, with lots of candy to sell to passengers. The carriage can be displayed with a similar type of connection as seen previously with the tender wagon, and when everything is in place it's undeniably impressively looking. There's a bunch of issues though, starting with the price. It's $500, which is a steep price for most people, and honestly, when comparing this to previous Harry Potter sets in a similar price point like the Hogwarts Castle or Diagon Alley, this set is the one that offers you the least value in my opinion. There's also things that could have been done to bring the price down to somewhat more affordable levels. I don't think the platform was really necessary, and honestly, when looking at it, the incomplete arches and the cored out bottom section make it look like a really weird build. The train tracks could have been done using far less bricks or even not being included in the set at all. 
the mechanism of the wheels and the three light bricks could have been gone too, and all of that would have brought the cost of the set under $400 for sure. The set is called Hogwarts Express, right? It's not Hogwarts Express with huge train tracks and platform. Also, most Harry Potter sets have an Harry Potter minifigure, and collectors of the theme must have a few dozens already, and this set itself has four different ones. While the scenes concept is cool and all, it narrowed down the possibility of maybe including other characters, or not including 20 minifigures total, could have helped to further reduce the final price of the set. Because regardless how big of a fan of Harry Potter you might be, you'd also need to be a big train slash Hogwarts Express fan to buy into a $500 train model that due to its length will be really hard to display in most homes. It isn't all bad though, and if you don't count the boring train track and the platform, the train itself was an awesome building experience. There's lots of detail in the passenger carriage, very clever building techniques all around like the tapered engine, the sides of the tender or the window sections, and it was overall very fun to build. It would be hard to recommend this to people due to the price versus value you're getting out of it, but if you find it with a decent discount and already own the castle and Diagon Alley, you're probably a big enough Harry Potter fan to justify the purchase of the most expensive Harry Potter Lego set released today. Right.